Okay, so I love this GED question of the day because there's a super simple trick to simplify it. But we see this language, simplify the expression, and then the expression is 10 to the fourth power. So um, a lot of students mistakenly write 40. That's the biggest error I see because they just automatically want to multiply 10 to the fourth power. But you would see really quickly, if you wrote this expression in expanded form, that 40 doesn't make sense. Because what does 10 to the fourth power mean? Well, what an, it means when you have an exponent is that the number is repeatedly multiplying. This could be rewritten as 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 or the number 10 multiplying by itself four times. Now obviously that's not gonna be 40 because right away when you multiply the first 10 by 10, you get 100. This 10 times 10 would also give you 100. And those two numbers still need to multiply together. Now there's a really nice trick for multiplying them together. One times one is one. And then I'm gonna add in all these zeros. So it's pretty dis easy to simplify this um, what I would call the long way, this is called expanded form, expanded form, rewriting an exponential expression, so there's an exponential expression, using repeated multiplication is known as the expanded form. But I have to tell you the truth, I actually don't think this is the easiest way to solve this problem. I want to show you one of my math ninja tricks. It's even easier than this. So really quickly here, let me bust out um, a blank screen so I can show you. Oop, I need a blank one. Let's go to here. Okay, I want to show you something really cool about the powers of 10. In order to establish this rule, I'm going to start way back at the zero power. So let's look at 10 to the zero power. Do you remember what the zero power does? A lot of students forget. The zero power always turns its base into 1. So 10 to the zero power just turns into 1. Now let's examine the next power of 10. The next power of 10 would be 10 to the first power. Well, most of us know that when you raise something to the first power, it does nothing. So 10 to the first power is the same as 10. Now let's look at the next one, 10 to the second power. Again, remember that doesn't mean 10 times two, it means 10 times itself twice, 10 times 10 or a hundred. Now I'm curious if you've seen the pattern yet. Maybe I'll bust out one more to see if we can see it. Okay, if 10 squared was the same as 10 times 10, 10 to the third is 10 times 10 times 10 or a hundred times 10. I'm just doing this off in side work because I actually have this memorized. I'd like you to see it too. Um, but 100 times 10 gives me 1,000. So I can see 10 to the third power is 1,000. So my curiosity is, do you spot the pattern yet? Do you see it? Obviously, whenever you take a power of 10, your answer always starts with a 1. Can you see that? But then look what happens with the zeros. When I raised it to the zero power, I have zero zeros or no zeros. When I raised it to the first power, look at that, one zero. When I raised it to the second power, two zeros. When I raised it to the third power, three zeros. All that um, uh, an exponent does on a 10 is is add zeros. And so I just want you to see, that's how right away when I saw 10 to the fourth power, I said, oh look, a one with four zeros. And this will allow you to simplify even larger problems. Like you could have 10 to the ninth power and half of the class will be sitting there multiplying 10 all day long and you'll very quickly go, oh look, a one and nine zeros. Then you can go home and sip tea while everybody else is cussing out their homework. See? and be a math ninja.